So this morning I was having an interesting thought. Um, some people might think I'm crazy because I have all these weird thoughts, but it centered around how relationships were 50, 60 years ago, at least here in the United States, pre-birth control. Now, when it came to a woman choosing a mate, because there was the risk of, I don't want to say risk of having a baby, but the potential of having a baby, a woman was way more selective when it came to who she chose to be intimate with. And it used to be back in the day that uh, basically if you wanted to get laid, you had to get married. So there was a lot, not, I mean, there was a discrimination. When I say discrimination, there was a vetting process a woman did, did to make sure this is a person she'd want to have a baby with. And then there was a commitment from the man to make that happen. And that certainly changed after birth control. And what's interesting that's happened in the last 50 or 60 years here in the United States, uh, a phenomena called dating came into place because it used to be a man would court a woman. In other words, he made, he basically would declare his interest in a woman. Now, by the way, I'm speaking generally and not as an absolute. This didn't happen all the time, but much of the time, a man would court a woman because he knew he wanted to go the distance with this person. And then all of a sudden after birth control, dating came into place. And then a little bit later, some, something called online dating came to place. So why is it important to understand this about dating? Well, the thing is, dating allows an opportunity for two people to take more time to get to know each other, to see if they're a fit for one another. And there's some benefit to that. But at the same time, a man can get the benefit of companionship, connection, and sex without any real commitment in the relationship. And so what I think has happened lately is that women are less choosy in a different sense when it comes to men, because the reality is, is men aren't committing as they once did. Now I'm not saying all men, but a substantial percentage of men. And sadly for the population out there, there are pundits who are advocating, and I'm thinking of people like Andrew Tate, who got banned from, um, from uh, some of the social media platforms. Now, it's my perception that he's promoting a misogynistic point of view, that men are quite superior to women, and women should be grateful for men for what they provide, and because of that, they should accept bad behavior from men. And I think that's really sad that that's being a you know, espoused out there. But at the same time, what bothers me is women do accept bad behavior from men because on some level, women are waiting for that level of commitment from a man and they're investing in relationships. They're investing time in men. They're investing time in men, hoping that this man will shift his perspective on commitment instead of doing a better job of vetting the man like it once was when you had to decide, is this a person I want to have a baby with? Now, in the past, it was based on financial resources. In other words, does this person have the resources to support me? What I think's changed in the last 20 years or 30 years, since women are predominantly the ones who initiate divorce more often, what I think women are actually wanting more and more is a deeper emotional connection with a man, a deeper emotional connection with a man. And I think that's a fair thing to want. I think it's a very fair thing to want to have a relationship that has a level of depth because if you can take care of yourself, if you can financially take care of yourself, then the need to have the man be the provider protector per se isn't as great. Okay, and that's not to say that we shouldn't genuinely care for our partners and want to protect them. And what I mean to say is take care of them. You know what is missing today in the dating process, and I said earlier how online dating has amplified this. It used to be that there was a little bit of scarcity in the past when it came to dating. What I meant to say is you had a very small pool of people to choose from if you grew up in tribes, you grew up in villages, you grew up in towns. And roughly up until about the 50s or so, it was you chose people within your own social circle and there was also 
tribe accountability or at least social accountability. In other words, it used to be, I, for someone like myself, I'm your big brother out there. If I could be there for you when you're having a first date with a guy, I'd have the shotgun ready and point it at the guy's face and say, what's your intentions with my sister? Well, that's certainly changed, especially in the last 20 years because of these devices, that there's this belief of abundance of opportunities. And what can happen is people can end a relationship today and literally be online and have a date within 24 hours or less. So when there's this, and what I mean by scarcity, from the mindset of it was like, look, I have to, I, there is a small pool of people to choose from. I should be more selective. And now men and women are not as selective as they used to be. And I think it's more, and men are less picky because the ease of getting physical intimacy by literally a click of a button, men are less picky. Did you know that men swipe right on profile somewhere between 40 and 60% of the time? Men are less picky because their barrier to entry into not a relationship, their barrier entry to the sex is very low because these days sex is practically given freely and I don't mean that as an absolute, but it's practically given freely. And so men can swipe away and hook up with somebody and make little or no commitment. And this is why I'm a big advocate for women to be more selective. Let's go back to the 50s, if you will, and be way more selective on who you invest time in. And I know you're frustrated because many of you think I have to add, I have to acquiesce to a man because men are the gatekeepers of commitment. Well, guess what, ladies? You're the gatekeepers of sex. Now, this sounds kind of maybe even draconian, if you will, but I'm here to say emotional as well as physical intimacy should be earned between two people. Now, listen, I'm sounding very Puritan here. I'm sounding very righteous, but I'm also witnessing that the number one emotional health issue facing most people is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. And because of that, there's a dis distressing lack of self-love. Coming back to my book, What the Heck is Self-Love? Anyway, A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a distressing lack of self-love, and dating triggers this wound of I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not likable, when we've had experiences over and over and over again that go nowhere. This is why when I work with a client, my job is to help women do a better job of vetting men, to do a better job of vetting men. And what vetting means is determining if he's worth your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Instead of the traditional way that we've operated that chemistry equals relationship success. Folks, chemistry alone doesn't really equal relationship success. Compatibility in the areas of values, lifestyle, and more importantly, emotional maturity. And women tend to read more relationship books than men. Women tend to read it. Doesn't mean you're good at practicing it, but you're certainly reading it more than men. So it's incumbent upon you to be more picky. And I'm gonna say something you're not gonna like either. It's incumbent upon you to treat it as a part-time job because we're, sw see, we're swimming in a sea of strangers. And whether we like it or not, we love the fantasy that Prince Charming will just come up and rescue us with our glass slippers. Ain't going to happen. It's going to require work on your part. And in my realm, it's only, I'm only asking for a half hour a day of effort on your part, whether it's swiping, whether it's communicating, whether it's going out on dates meeting for coffee, cumulatively, a couple hours a week. If you feel like that's too much to invest, then are you really ready for a relationship? Because the delusion that is just gonna walk into your door, and certainly during COVID, it was much harder to meet people because we're not out in the, in the marketplace, if you will. It's gonna require to be ultra picky. Now, not from the sense of discriminating someone based on trivial things like how tall they are or such like that. I don't know. I've had women who are five foot two say, I refuse to date a man six foot two or under. 
because I want to feel protected. Well, ladies, Bruce Lee was five, six, and he could kick the butt of a dozen guys all at once. And by the way, the average Navy SEAL is five, six, five, nine and a half. And they're the baddest mother, you know, mothers on the planet. But I'm here to say, don't give in to the narrative that many of the people are espousing that you're the problem. You have every right to be picky. Let me just say this. And more importantly, be picky when it comes to emotional maturity. Because there's a lot of emotionally, and emotional maturity really relates to relationship skills. So humans that do introspective work, that have healed childhood wounds and traumas, are more apt to be able to have the skills to lean into a relationship because without it, relationships are a heck of a lot of work. And the work is overcoming our own issues. When you've done the inner work, you become more of a magnetic attractor for someone else that's done the work. And when they've done introspective work as well, they're better prepared to lean into a healthier, happier relationship. So men are less picky because they operate most often that chemistry equals relationship success. Your job is to focus on shared values, blendable lifestyle, and more importantly, emotional maturity. It doesn't matter how tall he is or what kind of car he drives. What matters most is, is this person emotionally mature enough to lean into a healthy, happy relationship? Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Post a comment below. I want to hear your thoughts on everything I just shared from beginning to end. Because I'm here to say whether we like it or not, it's going to take more effort because we no longer live in a village where we can see the person we're going to probably mate with. And because of that, it's going to take a little more effort. All right, that's my two cents on that. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. As I said below, please post it below. If you're um, watching this, um, please tell your friends about my group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, asking questions for a nominal fee of $20 a month. You can have direct access to me. So go to my website, jonathanasley.com, send your friends there, have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm gonna sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrett of self love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm asking you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. And let's check out this beautiful sunrise that's happening. <laughs> Take care. Bye now.